Hi, I'm Cory, and this is my first video in YouTube. So for my first video, I prepared the sample data set so that I can share to you some of the things that I know of in terms of using Microsoft Excel to generate the total amount of data sets. So in this sample data set, you can see that there are several information presented. This is basically an annual sales record of a vendor, particularly of fruits and vegetables. All pertinent data are available for our analysis later on. Our objective basically is to get the annual sales. So basically adding all the sales generated from January to December. The first function that which we can use to meet the objective is the sum function. So first let's define the sum function. The sum function basically adds all the numerical values within a range or set of cells. And with the sum function, the result doesn't change even if we filter the set of information. So this is a sample sales record. And with this, we will apply the sum function to get the annual sales. So we'll key in equals sum, open parenthesis, choose the first cell or the topmost cell, and then simultaneously click in shift control down so that we'll get to the bottom most portion of the data and then close the function with a close parenthesis and then click enter so here you'll see that our annual sales is 1.88 million so we've seen the annual sales generated in this sample annual sales record and it resulted to 1.88 million. But what if we want to see the sum of a specific condition? So for example, we just want to know the sales that was generated during the month of January. So let's use the sum function again. Let's not change the formula. And then we'll just use the filter to check the January sales. So we'll choose all the data headers and then click in data and then filter and from there let's try to select january only and let's see if the result will change so we choose january in the filter but unfortunately the result didn't change so why is it so we've mentioned a while ago that even if we filter the data, the result of the sum formula won't be affected or won't change. So what we can do using the sum formula is to key in again sum and then just choose the sales particularly for the month of January. And then close parenthesis. And from there, we can see the, re the result changed to 65,600 pesos. But what if there's a better way for us to do this instead of manually changing the formula every now and then? So let me introduce to you the formula of subtotal. So let's define subtotal. Subtotal function is similar to the sum function, but the result changes based on the filtered information. So going back to the data again, let's apply the subtotal function. So the subtotal function gives us more flexibility as it allows us to get the result just by changing the information through filters. So let's key in equals subtotal and then let's choose 9 which corresponds to the sum function, comma, click in again the first cell, then simultaneously click shift control down again and then close parenthesis. And you'll see that it resulted to the same amount when we used the sum function. So from here, you can see that it's 1.88 million. And unlike with the sum function, when we want to know the January sales, we don't have to manually encode anymore. We'll just need to click the filter and choose January and it will automatically change to 65,600, which is the total amount of sales for the month of January alone. We can also apply another function. So what if we want to know the sales, particularly for vegetables, for the month of January? With that, we'll just click in the filter again under type and then choose vegetables. 
And you can see that the result changed again for this specific conditions. Now, I've shared to you both sum and the subtotal function, but do you know that there are other ways which we can also get the total other than the two aforementioned functions? So for the next function, I'll be sharing to you sum if and sum ifs. So let's define both functions. So the sum if function basically adds the numerical values within a range based on a criterion. And if we want to use or have multiple criteria, we can also use the sum ifs function. So now let's go back to our data set. So we filtered the information based on what we want to see. So for the sample a while ago, we want to see the sales generated by selling vegetables during the period of January. So we'll just unfilter everything. And now let's key in the sum if function formula. So we'll type in equals sum if then choose the range so we'll choose the column where our criteria is located which is the month and then control shift down again and then select until the last column where the invoice sales is located and then key in the criteria inside the quotation marks so for example, we want to see the January sales. So let's type in January and then quotation, comma, and then the column of our invoice sales, which is the sum range. So again, shift control down and then close parenthesis. And you can see that the result showed the January sales of 65,600 pesos. We can double check that since our formula here is still subtotal. So let's again filter January alone. So from here, you can see that the result for both subtotal and sum if resulted to the same answer. So you've seen how the sum if function works. But let me share to you one of the ways that I do when I use the sum if function so that it will give me more flexibility to change the information easily. So instead of typing in the criteria here, I choose a cell where I can just type in the criteria and change it easily. So for example, we can type in the month here. So I, instead of typing in January, we'll put in the cell and click enter. And because we don't have any condition yet, the result turned into zero. But what if we change the month here? So let's say January. So it resulted to the 65,600 pesos sales in January. And then instead of filtering again the information or changing it in the formula of the sum if, let's change the month here. So February, March, April, May. So you can... So, as you notice, we, the result easily changes based on what you type in a certain cell. So, you don't really need to change the information within the formula. So, you can just put in the information in a certain cell where the sum if formula will get the information from. So, with this, we can double check if our answer via sum if is correct. So, let's filter the information to May. And then you'll see that the sum if formula answer and the subtotal answer are both the same. And we've mentioned a while ago that there are instances where you can use a certain formula if you want to have multiple conditions or multiple criteria. So for this sample, we'll be using the sum ifs function. So basically, the sum ifs function is the same as sum if. It's just that for this one, we have two or more conditions. So with the sum ifs function, first let's take out all our filters first. And then for the sum ifs function, let's try to also look for the type of product that was sold for a particular month. So we can just put in here vegetables. And with the sum ifs function, we'll type in equals sum ifs. Select the sum range or where the value is in. So we're looking for the invoice sales, so we'll choose the invoice sales column. 
and then the criteria range the range where our first criteria is located so our first criteria is the month so let's key in month so let's click the month column and drag it until the bottom most portion and then what's the criteria so we'll click the cell where we will be putting the criteria and then comma the next criteria location which is the type so let's choose the type column and then click again until the bottommost portion and then comma click in the cell where we will be placing the second criteria so the types here then close parenthesis and you can see that the result for both some ifs and subtotal functions are the same and now, for the last function that I will share to you, it's the sum product. Basically, it adds all the product of adjacent ranges. So as an example, let's remove again all the filters first. And let's assume that you are not seeing the invoice sales portion here and even the subtotal. So what if we're just presented with the data like the number of kilos sold and the price per kilo? And we want to know the annual sales. So for the sum product, we can get the annual sales by adding all the products simultaneously without having to have that separate invoice sales column. So let's type in sum product and then choose the first array, which are the number of kilos sold. So click in the first cell and Again, click until the bottom most portion, comma, the second array, which is the price per kilo, and then close parenthesis. And you can see that the result will be the same with what was generated when we use the subtotal formula. So thank you guys for tuning in to my first video. So if you know people who can benefit from watching this video, please share them to your friends, families, and even your office mates. And I'll be uploading similar contents like this in the next days or months. Please click the like button and the subscribe buttons. And key in your comments and suggestions in the comment box below. So that's it. Thank you guys. Bye!